Good morning. Don and Cosmic here. Well, I like it. The video is uh, portraying that it's dark. Even though it's light, you can see the reflection of my phone in my eyes. So, yeah, it's technically pretty damn dark right now. The presence of all the light in the background, all the headlights, the street lights. I just love how the phone <laughs> makes it so much lighter. I mean, I, I get, you know, I get caught up in right now. I may have a plan for my video. I still get caught up in the moment. And it's, it's so beautiful to be able to be presence uh, in the moment. If I am there everywhere, I'm not thinking ahead. I'm not like, what do I need to do tomorrow? I'm not like, well, what did I do yesterday? Because, you know, I'm trying to learn a, about a better way to be tomorrow. I'm just here. Oh, I find that in simple things like observing my, my phone's talent for bringing a different version of reality to the visual sense. Oh, look, it got dark because I'm under the tree. <laughs> what? You see that? It's just reflecting so much. I, I love it. Anyways, uh, so I am on a health topic with some uh, information I would love to pass on. I normally start with like an energy drink madness. And so I've been having a lot of energy drinks in my life that are normally zero sugar. <clears throat> Occasionally I've slipped up, you know, I'm not perfect. Someone has <laughs> someone, someone has spray painted the ground with red spray paint and <laughs> it says smoke crack in red that's <laughs> that's fucking ridiculous <laughs> oh my god what a message to spread to people I, I start my video with I'm on a health food topic, basically. Health topic. <laughs> and somebody else's message to the world in red spray paint on the side. I mean, <laughs> side of the highway over here. On the trail is smoke crack. Ay, ay, ay. This world's going nowhere real fast if we don't get our ass in gear to take care of that kind of problem. I have some theories and I have a plan <laughs> but holy shit okay that's an epidemic in a lot of different ways just the whole mentality behind it oh look how bright it is now look how daylightish even though it's not I mean geez you can see this guy's headlight on his bicycle way the fuck down there that's like a mile away almost that I can see that light. Okay, so I've got a uh, perfect bar, a original refrigerated peanut bar. And I also have Black Rifle. They make an uh, espresso and cream. So it's a 200 milligram caffeinated beverage. Um... My go-to in the morning is normally coffee first. I have a either a 10 ounce or two six ounce Keurig brews of, uh, I like the San Francisco Bay, Costco, you know, the little pods that are like a cloth pod. Um, I love that coffee for some reason. And uh, normally I have one of those before I even step out. Um, it's right out of the shower. You know, sometimes I 
for health purposes, do cold water in the shower, and it, you know, it increases circulation. Some people may say that going from hot to cold uh, will mute your immune system, uh, the response. Um, that's more <clears throat> dramatic, like going from a climate change, going from a normal climate to, say you lived in Antarctica, <clears throat> and then you went to the equator, you're really going to be susceptible to being sick because you didn't really acclimate if you just went straight from one to the other. So going from, you know, a normal 70 degree area to some place like Dubai, uh, you're at a higher risk for getting sick. Um, and it's a lot of times it's actually <clears throat> better to be in colder climates. Anyways, you know, colder sometimes uh, helps the body work a little harder and your metabolism is higher to begin with. So, I already had one of these coffees this morning. My Keurig broke and I have been relying on energy drinks and, um, you know, I wanted coffee because I like coffee in the morning. I would have had an energy drink right now if I had coffee this morning, but I don't. Anyways, my breakfast is the uh, protein bar <clears throat> and um, from what I understand, there's certain things that we can eat more of that really, really boost our bodies in the way that I guess everything breaks down. I mean, you can take supplements of amino acids, but I mean, a fundamental uh, building block of human existence is carbon. So what breaks down the carbon? Carbon is all life forms, right? Uh, well, maybe not pure energy or consciousness, but... <laughs> and I may sound stupid because I'm starting to talk about things that are not part of this video. So... We really, as... Uh, if we're focused on health, um, we want to stay away from things like, you know, added sugar as much as possible. Real, uh, real, like, minimally processed cane sugar. I mean, that'd be the best kind of sugar to actually have, probably, if it's added. Even though that's still a bad idea. But main, like high fructose corn syrup or, you know, that's like really, really not okay because it's an artificially extracted cooked version of the sugar that your body would make <clears throat> from the, the fruit or vegetable. And with that in mind, pay attention how much of that's in your food. You know, everything comes with a label. Um, I always have known for a long time that, you know, the way you read the ingredient list of what's inside of your food, what it contains, is in order of greatest to least. So if you see <clears throat> water, sugar, <laughs> it's probably a bad idea. Um, it's got the highest content aside from water, would be sugar, right? Or if you see high fructose corn syrup as number two, probably a bad idea. I would just stay away from it. The more of a natural diet that we can get to that is aligned with our body types. And, I mean, we could even look into our ancestry and know that we were cave people at one point we ate fucking shit that we killed right away. We didn't even have fire at one point. So, you know, that whole paleo diet. 
super easy for our bodies to digest because in the scope of things with our evolution we have evolved so dramatically fast towards the end but we're still like we're right at the beginning kind of um so as we develop all these different health problems we look at why what's the change what's new then you look at all the stuff that's being prepared for us we're not going out and hunting for it so there's an absence of fitness um we are as a species at the apex to where we no longer have to go out and fight to survive in a normal way we do it with well we have to go out and fight to survive by hunting for fucking money because money is the idea ah i see it differently and that's okay um but that's the truth is no longer do we hunt for food for survival we hunt for money for survival so can you eat money kind of but not really you if you had a safe full of money at home you can go out and buy stuff provided it's open right provided that it's not the time of night like say you work the night shift and you sleep during the day and then your normal waking hours are the time that you're working and you go out you have a very limited accessibility to things um there's not a lot open so keeping things in mind like you can't eat a safe full of money i mean if you had a bunch of food stock you can right you just stockpile food i do it most people fucking do it probably because it's quite kind of a kind of like a nesting uh or something like that you know you want to make sure you have enough to survive so you subconsciously build up the uh, necessities for survival now what kind of survival do we want do we want an unhealthy survival or healthy survival and is it possible to stockpile an abundance of things that are going to be good for my body and brain in certain environments yes i say that the abundance abundance is already there it's right here in front of us every day i walk around i find uh, wild edibles that i've identified that i know i can eat some days i'm in the mood to bend down and pick it up and eat it most people would agree with you walk by a berry bush you know blackberries and you eat one those are easily identifiable most peop people would possibly identify with the idea that they will not eat something they don't know because it might harm them and kill them so they stay away from it <sighs> educating yourself on wild edibles it's a miracle because then the earth around you that you came from that you're naturally in at least for the moment maybe not where you originated from but where you're at it can support you with vitamins and nutrients and minerals from the ground right around you it's not even bad to eat a little bit of dirt sometimes i think there's a, a gentleman that ate a teaspoon of dirt a day and um it was over in utah and he's just super healthy super happy there's also something called diatomaceous earth and i've heard of people taking it daily and it like basically regulates your whole you know keeps your insides right it's ancient uh ground up ancient fossils and shit over in Nevada they make it I think right now I'm on a health kick because I've been on one for a long time I've been researching ways for myself to be healthy 
I do my best. I'm not perfect. But forward progress is forward progress. So, with that in mind, you know, there are plenty of resources right here available to us to effectively learn and go out and be healthy. It's all around us. It's what we tune into. Um, in this area that I live in, there's more health food freaks than anywhere that I've personally been. I'm not saying that they're not more healthy in other places. And I think that more of a natural place where people live straight off the land, that's going to be the best. Unfortunately, I don't live in that area, so to speak. People aren't living in communities, like communal areas, where they're going out and they're actually hunting for survival. Or we're eating off of the land only. We have to go out and make money to do that. Um, ideally, the best kind of environment would be like a survivalist garden. A garden right in your area that everything lives in harmony together. There's a outside area that protects the inside area. It's super cool. Um, and then you have food all year round that's right in harmony with nature. And there's other parts of that that would attract prey. So bigger, bigger protein would come in and eat some of the, you know, some of the berries and whatnot. And then you take out a deer and you got meat for the next fucking three months. Maybe six months, depending on the size of the, t size of the deer. And I, at that point, would give thanks to this awesome place I get to live in for the meat. I would love to only have to do that. But this place is designed in a different way right now. I don't have that readily available. I guess there's a possibility I could drive off in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you know, on some BLM land. Currently, I have responsibilities that I cannot stray from. And uh, my current responsibilities that they involve you know my two children and I would never betray that I love my children so with that in mind there's a movie I would want to recommend that I saw I think it's Camp Captain Fantastic I think that's the name of it something like that and it has to do with uh he even has Noam Chomsky day in there it's it's a really good movie if it's not Captain Fantastic in, in which case I'll look it up you know I, I could be wrong I haven't seen it, seen it in a long time I, I really wish that I had the gumption to at one point be living like that movie um, and maybe I do coming up <laughs> not part of it but if, if you see the movie you'll know why I'm laughing <laughs> because physically I probably would not deal with part of, I wouldn't do part of it <laughs> that's part of my childhood <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I was a no good human. <laughs> so I've learned from my mistakes and uh, and the idea that I create, uh, let's say, a karmic, a karmic debt, and I also pay a karmic debt. And uh, what we can do is look at that as like good points and bad points. And a lot of it has to do with being. How do I say this? Being in situations of extreme suffering to pay a karmatic debt in order to receive something beautiful. Because when we are in situations, there is and always is a light at the end of the tunnel. As far as 
no matter how bleak something could look, there's always something beautiful about it. It's just how we perceive it. I see the fact that extreme suffering in any form is there to really add value to the times of feeling pleasure or feeling good or the absence of extreme suffering because you know I mean if you suffered super bad and then you had relief from that it could be the best thing in the world just feeling warm for that fact you know you almost froze to death and you lost part of your limbs due to frostbite. Okay. And then you almost starved to death. And you get that first bite of food. And you get that, you know, that sensation of normality returning to your body after almost freezing to death. And you go through that, ah, that burning and that painful. And then... And then you're in comfort. That comfort, right outside of that. That first bite of food, even though it's painful to eat still. That relief from suffering. It's probably the best thing in the fucking world. I'd say that because I've really never almost starved to death. Uh, I've never almost froze to death either. So those are hypothetical. Myself, I have been through some periods of extreme suffering in a ton of different physical ways, um, mental ways, and I'll tell you what, part of the realest thing I ever experienced felt like I was getting ripped apart from the inside out. It's so beautiful. It was one of the best things that I've ever had happen and you know when it was happening I probably didn't think that but it was the realest things have ever been for me some people stay stuck to that and they don't use it as motivation to stay healthy or good or in a position of you know keeping yourself from ending up in whatever situation you were in some people excel go through extreme poverty and they always live good and you see them and they're happy and they're giving back and they're loving and that's the idea is even though even though I've been through some fucked up situations and I would say a good majority of it was childhood in a way of a mix between pleasure and pain uh, going through psychological and physical abuse uh, it's I get to be here for other people if if I have the ability I can show empathy towards somebody and relate if I'm in the situation that's part of my design there's more to my design than that. Just one little tiny area. I'm not trying to go too dark right now. I'm trying to stay on a health topic. Part of this is mental health. I believe that um, some of the people in life that have never really had to experience that can go through life feeling empty. And some of those people, they face something like suicide. And, and we wonder why. I think it's the absence of suffering or struggle that may have led them to that. Or maybe there's a different struggle going on and they feel ill inside because of it. Maybe once you get to the top and you have everything, maybe it's nothing at all. That's weird, right? Maybe some of the lesser in life find more happiness because we have more to be grateful for currently I walk around with 
very limited funding. I have a lot of engagements that keep me living and I'm living life. And I'm not focused on going out and slaving away. And I'm not saying go out and quit your jobs or anything like that. Um, people have recommended to me, no, stay working while you transition into whatever artistry. Because ultimately I'm an artist. Uh, that's painfully obvious. I have an originality about me that I get complimented on. I, I just know I've observed doing things differently in a way that it's not really different. It's just I'm finally being me and that shows enough to where I receive compliments about it. It's things that happen that confirm things for me. I also have a very, very vivid and great imagination. It is one of my greatest strengths. And it's everybody's greatest strength, in my opinion. I think it's an Einstein quote. Imagination is your greatest strength or something like that. Don't hold me to that. I'm probably summarizing that as my interpretation of it. It's the idea that I create with my mind and I can breathe it into existence. All I have to do is focus. My creation comes to life every single time, no matter what it is. Now, I can go through periods where I'm not okay. Everybody can, too. Um, I tend to hold on to a lot. I hold on to experiences that are unsatisfactory with other people or situations that are unavoidable because of a mechanical failure. I take it really hard. And um, I kind of always have due to some of the childhood stuff. So as far as mental health goes, there's ways I can receive the same amount of love back. I just have to put myself in the right environment. I can't stay going into a dark or negative environment. I have to go into a positive or light environment. And by dark, I mean, I would say if there's someone that consecutively poisons other people with their behavior, their attitude and all that, they're probably suffering the most. And it's not my place to go there and absorb all that. Take it, be treated a certain way. It's not my place. I tend to do it, especially for somebody I care about. But overall, I have to care about me. I have to show up for me. When I show up for me fully, everybody wins. My children, all of my family. I don't have to hold on to shit. It's going to be poisonous and let it kill me and just stay there. That's good mental health. I think it starts with a physical body's health. If we don't have the right food in us, we can't think right. We're gonna vibrate at some fucked up frequency, a very low mood because it's designed in the food we're eating. Don't even go there. Just, if you know something's bad for you, stay away from it. Especially if it's something you can control by what you're putting into your body. If it's an outside influence and old patterns are really hard to break sometimes. Especially if you're going into an environment that's not healthy mentally because somebody's abusive. It's addictive. It's one of the most addictive substances that I have found for me. Because ultimately... It's like being raped over and over and over again. 
and uh, fuck it's a suffering addicted to suffering addicted to some kind of victim mentality because it's for me been beaten into me from a young age it's like the good and the light was beaten out of me and I'm reuniting with it you know as a 37 year old young man I went through some changes I went through something that was profound I was leading up to that in dramatic stages over the period of I'd say from about my journey started really at 19 but 23 really at 23 some magical things started to happen and uh I was retraining my mind in a in a way of manifestation and watching things change due to active thought and actually focused on health then um now I've gone through some battles because they're different phases of my development I'm 38 now and um one of the most beautiful things I could ever offer myself is for me to show up for me. And I say that's true for everybody. A lot of times we want to look at things and show up for other people. Or we want to look outside and try to fix everybody else. I do. I fall victim to the idea that I, I need to share me with everybody else on my level. I don't look at them for who they are and what could benefit them the most sometimes. I'm learning to. Because everybody's at a different phase of development. And this human condition, it's terminal. It's fatal. Look at the fog. <laughs> the idea that we have time is such a joke. Because every day we wake up. That's the point. I mean, every single time we awake, we have a new chance, a new lease, a new extension on the idea that we can build upon experience. We have all of this retention of this experience. What about the other ones? How many people get to access that? I think it would be healthy of everybody if ultimately everybody could tune into, oh, let's say a wealth of knowledge within themselves. There are ways to achieve that. Health, overall physical health, body health, mental health, spiritual health. It's, I think, one thing that leads to the other. It starts with being able to think right. If you don't feed your body right, well, if you don't start thinking about feeding your body right. So there's a trap. It's, it's sad because so many people fall victim to something that they don't even see because it's just right there in front of them. It's been there their whole life. No one took the time to pull them out of it, set them aside for a second and say, hey, check this out. This is not good for you. This is not serving you. What is serving you? Look at this in life. Everybody, pay attention. If it's no longer self-serving, if it's not serving you and you know it's harming you, remove it. Do your best. It might be a fight, but do it. What harm could come from removing harm? And when we totally escape that and we get a different view, there's gonna be some kind of new harm. And if we're on the right path, what we can do is we can look at every new situation. So we're always growing and we're growing out of these other unhealthy things. And we're growing into some kind of ultimate physical, spiritual, and mental health. And it doesn't stop. It just keeps getting deeper and deeper, better and better kind of more fucked up and more fucked up I think the more we grow the more complex the, the growing 
tends to be. It's like the lessons just keep getting harder and harder and harder. And maybe we're in class together. This experience being one big giant learning lesson, one big giant school. And then how do I uh, ever separate myself from everybody else if I'm the same? If we are one, one consciousness, one life force with a bunch of different flavors everywhere you look. I would love to rip everybody out of their shit and bring them here, present, accounted for, loving themselves, looking for possibilities to grow and change and better everyone around them. Not just to walk on somebody's back to get to the top of the fucking human carcass ladder. I've done said this before. You know, I love the moisture. It makes my nose run every time out here. It's like being in a cool mist humidifier. I say that because I've lived in a dry place. I've lived in the desert. Absence of moisture leads to really longing for for moisture, right? Um, when I moved back to my natural climate where I was born and raised, fuck, I swear to God, it felt like I was inside of a cold mist humidifier, my whole respiratory tract. Now it's good and bad. Um, certain things about drier climates prevent certain things. Also, like, if you live in a really, really dry environment, chips last forever. They don't go stale. <laughs> Cereal the same. I used to have a bag of chips in my vehicle for, like, fucking two to three weeks. Open it, unroll it. Fuck, it's still crispy like it was brand new. Tastes fresh. Didn't have to worry about shit going stale. Down here, at sea level, right by the ocean... You got to seal a meal shit <laughs> to keep it fresh. Either that or have a some kind of dehydrator. I don't even know. I used to make jerky on the string right from ribeye. Just cut up some ribeye. Put a little salt and pepper. That was one of the best. Um, and then I'd just put it up on the string. It'd be jerky in the next day. It would dry out enough to eat. That's really cool. I can't do that down here. I actually have to have a dehydrator. In this kind of climate, there's a fear of it going rancid. Unless it's out in the sun, then you know, I can use the sun power um, during a wetter time of the year. That's not going to work unless you have some kind of protective layer that's going to keep the moisture out. And then you basically use the sun to cook it. Um, <sighs> eating raw food is another thing. Um, it's a better thing for our bodies to process. A lot of people think you have to cook everything. That really removes a lot of the natural structure from the food. And then we end up with, uh, you know, abnormalities within our body. Unhealthy tendencies. Even walking with shoes on is bondage to our feet. It's not natural. Our feet were designed for no shoes. But yet, we still wear the shoes for comfort. And we're putting ourselves into bondage and slavery. A lot of things lead to mental slavery, like phonetics, the way our language is, the ideas that are forced upon us from preconceived notions of the way things are spelt or spelling within it. It's like the spell that we're under, language. I would not like to languish in language with the spells of the spelling that we're under with our verbiage and our vocabulary, vocal vocabulary. I would love to see the world with real eyes when I realize the world or stand under instead of understanding I would not like to stand under the the idea I would like to understand if we stand under though 
Are we always under? That means they're pressed. So. Hmm. Seeing the world through real eyes is way different than realizing that the world is the world or the way it is and that we have no effective change in it or no effect in the whole world when really the only world that's real is ours. How many people fall victim every day thinking they're powerless, humbled by some kind of mass-produced hysteria or trap. When we're in a trap made by ourselves, the only trap was we didn't believe we were good enough or we believed we were separate. We were not one. When the truth is we are one, we're one with everything. So many people fall victim and perish without ever being able to see the light or become the light. I am going to end this video. I don't know if it'll upload. I think it will. I haven't really put any big videos on. There's a, there's a need for high-speed data at home. Sure, it'll happen at some point. And I would wish everybody self-development, self-growth, and harm reduction in the ways of mental health, physical health, and spiritual health. And I would encourage everybody to go outside and light up the world with a smile. Good morning. Hey, very good, how are you? Because after all, we're, we're some kind of social creature that doesn't like to be alone. Even though we are alone, we're just all alone together in a weird mix of one. So the one consciousness and the idea is that if ultimately we don't love ourselves, we're going to experience other people not loving us. That's it. That's a fact. We hit ourselves deep down, someone's going to be there to hate us. We have to start loving ourselves, showing up for us, and then watch and receive the same thing coming back because we truly fucking purely deserve it. We know it. And with that, I love you all. Stay up, stay lit, and peace.